Uh, how familiar is this scenario for you, for what you went through back then in 1990? Oh, I think totally unfamiliar. This is a totally different circumstances, totally different issues. This is, uh, I think, without doubt, the most important issue that has faced this country in my lifetime in peacetime. It is about the future role of Britain in the world. It is about the opportunities for the young generation. And Britain is taking a voluntary step from the top table. I can think of no precedent for a country beha behaving in such a short-term, inward-looking view. Well, I tell you what people have drawn similarities to, and that is a female prime minister sticking to her guns, keeping going in the face of a lot of criticism and challenges coming forward. The other similarity is the, the constant use of cricketing analogies. She made reference yesterday. Uh, Margaret Thatcher, on the 12th of November 1990, said, I'm still at the crease, even though the bowling is hostile. The next day, Geoffrey Howe also used a cricketing reference, which apparently so inspired you that the following day you challenged her leadership. So has she got about a day to wait before someone does it to her? Well, look, if I was in your position, I would make these sort of points. It's very good and it keeps the show on the road. But frankly, the issue is so important and so fundamental to Britain's future in the world that I, I really think that you are debasing the quality of the okay, then. Okay. matters we All need right. to discuss. So what, with your experience, even if it's not a similar experience, but you've a lot of experience of tense moments and your problems were to do with the Prime Minister and the dealings with Europe, in a slightly different way, I understand. What should we do now? Should we accept the deal? Should we say no to the deal and risk maybe a hard Brexit? or no Brexit at all? What should she do? Well, neither you or I can actually do much, but the fact is this deal is not going through the House of Commons. And we're either going to waste quite a lot of time and <clears throat> a great deal of money waiting to find that out, or they will start looking to work out how to extricate themselves from this appalling situation. There may be a leadership challenge, but she would win that, in my view. Uh, if there was a vote of confidence, she would win that, I think. Uh, I don't believe there's any threat of a general election, in, although there'll be, the whips will use it in order to terrify backbenchers into thinking they're going to get a Corbyn government. But I don't think that's real. I think that's just whips talk. Um, so the, the issue is, what do you do if you can't get this deal through the House of Commons? Now, the Europeans are not going to change their position. They've always made it quite clear that we're the ones leaving the club. They're not going to change the club rules. And if we were in their position, we wouldn't do so either. So I think that in the end, you have to find a way of going back to the people. And my own guess is that this will end up in a second referendum. And already the signs are quite clear that the majority of people want to remain in Europe and at the heart of world politics. But Lord, Lord has a time. You have been in politics for many, many years and democracy is a key part of that. And what yeah. the people that made that vote originally and won the yeah. vote will say is we've had a vote. We made our decision and we have to stick by that vote. And, and whether the, the, the goalposts and the, and the pitches change now or not, it is the government's duty to see through what the people asked for. Yes, well, that's what they will say. Um, the fact is, anyone who wins a general election says that. The duty of opposition is to oppose and to seek to change. And I've spent my life, you've uh, kindly made the point for me, uh, actually seeking to change or reverse policies that the Labour Party got a mandate for in a general election. So if you really believe that uh, uh, we want to have power in Parliament, gaining control, okay. then you have to trust Parliament to make the decisions. Will she survive? You've been in a divided cabinet where the female Prime Minister didn't survive. Do you think she will? Well, I wasn't in the cabinet, you see. I left the cabinet in 86. The events you're talking about took place in 1990. But the fact is that uh, there is a similarity, isn't that Margaret talked to all the cabinet ministers and the bulk of them advised her to go. 
Now, it, the only similarity I can see that in this case, I have read in yesterday's newspapers okay. what every cabinet minister said. It was all listed there, names and quotations. Right. So it's quite obvious that this is a deeply divided cabinet. Mm.